Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> welcome, welcome. What's this button do? Okay, let's see. Everybody coming on in. I just want to let everyone know that you will want a pen and a paper for this because this is a workshop. So if you haven't got it, go grab it really quick. All right. And as soon as that happens, people let me know in the Q&A if you have what you need so we can get started. That was an accident. Stop sharing. Okay, cool. So my name is Tori Franklin. I am an Olympic triple jumper, nonprofit founder and author. And I have been writing since forever, but I've written for Medium for about two years now. And I believe that one of the biggest strengths, one of my biggest strengths is my ability to take real life experiences and emotions and convey them artistically in my writing. For many, this is difficult to do. The three main reasons being that as a society, we are generally disconnected from our bodies and how we truly feel. Two, we don't encourage each other to express our true emotions. Every day we ask each other, how are you? And 95% of the time our answer is, I'm good. But and the third reason being is we don't have a vast enough vocabulary to facilitate the wide range of emotions that we experience as human beings. We know good, bad, happy, sad, angry, frustrated, and some people may use melancholy, but that's rare. Writing with our emotions brings authenticity to our stories. It helps readers connect with the characters or the stories that we're trying to share about our lives. During this workshop, we will think of a specific emotional moment or event and describe it with colorful words, metaphors, similes, and anything else. If we have time or if people are willing, we will share some of these stories at the end. Okay. All right. So feel free to stop me at any point if you want to ask questions or make a comment or anything like that. If you don't know, you can ask a question. I believe it's to the right of the screen and I'll see it. Okay. So as I said, I see some other people are hopping in. Just make sure you have a pen and paper because we're about to get started. So first and foremost, one, one of the key main key ingredients to recognizing emotion is presence. And what do I mean when I say presence? Do I mean you are simply physically being in a space? You are here, you're technically present, but are you mentally, emotionally, physically, and energetically here? Okay, your body is here, but is your mind elsewhere thinking about what you're going to do after this? Is your energy still aggravated from the person that cut you off this morning? And now your nervous system, system is all messed up. That's what I mean by being here in all aspects of you. So let's take a second to take three deep breaths. We will have a slight pause at the top of the inhale and count each breath at the end of the exhale like this. one. Okay. So let's take a moment to take these three breaths to bring you fully to this moment. One. Two.
three. Now, in this moment, what are you feeling in your body right now? You don't need to answer me, but take note for yourself. Are you feeling a stiff back? Are you feeling smooth and fluid? Do you have sore feet? Part of being present mentally, emotionally, and physically is bringing presence to your body. Emotions don't only rise in your mind, but they hold energy physically in how you feel. Thanks. Okay. In everyday life, of course, this is harder than it sounds, but remembering to be present, especially in emotional circumstances, it can be easy to want to hide from our emotions instead of allowing them to express themselves fully. Does anybody want to comment how that experience made them feel or things that they felt within themselves? Feel free to type it. I will wait. Okay. So the second thing after presence is putting a name to the emotions. For this next part, think about a time when you felt an extreme emotion. For this specific practice, please refrain from tapping too deeply into any traumatic events uh, that may cause you physical or emotional instability or discomfort. Now, before putting a generic name to this emotion that you felt during this, this event, I want you to take a look at this list of feelings and emotions and write down a few words that fit with how you felt. Moments while I share the screen. Can you guys see that? I hope you guys can see that. So this is the list. And after a few minutes, I will switch to the second part, which has less positive emotions. I'll go back up in a second. Just want to give people, oh, you can't see this. Can you guys see this list? You guys could not see that list. Okay, one second. Can you see this one? Okay, cool. All right, so take a second to look at this list. Try to stay away from the emotions that we typically know how to describe and look at ones that maybe you haven't heard of or don't use very often.
And now I'm going to go up because maybe some people are feeling confident and affectionate and peaceful from the experience that they chose. And take a look at these other words to describe similar emotions. Once you have about five, let's say, then I think that is a good list. Okay. All right. So with this list, whether the words we chose were numb or petrified or dazzled or content, try to recall how this felt within your body. How did you physically feel during this experience? Were your hands shaking with rage? Did your body tingle with bliss? Were your feet heavy with boredom? Don't write out a full sentence. Just make another list of the sensations you felt within your body. And if you're having trouble finding fun words uh, to describe this, you can pop on over to thesaurus.com. It is your best friend. And find once you find a, a general word, then you can use the source to try to find something more creative and more fun. I'm going to write some down as well. And I'll give you a couple minutes to do this. Also, if anybody does want to go back and see the emotions list, let me know. And after this, the next question is, what was your outlook on the world during this time? If you were in love, did the sun shine brighter? If you felt curious, was the world like a playground? If you chose suspicious, did this make the world seem gray and unsafe? Make a list of your world view. Is anyone having trouble or have any questions at the moment? I think I just now opened questions. The 
I'm not sure. I've never done this platform. All right. So after you kind of figured out what your worldview was at the time of this event or emotional moment, we can now attempt to put all of this together. Write a five to, five to 10 sentence paragraph describing how you felt in the moment that you chose. I will give five full minutes this time for you to put all of this together. So what do we have? One, we became present, all right? Um, and we tried to put, we made a list of words that can describe an emotional time or experience that we had. With these words, we are going to combine them with how we felt in our bodies. And then you also use these to describe our outlook on the world at that time. This should be able to create a very descriptive, a very colorful, um, a very emotion felt paragraph that a reader would be able to connect and identify with. Okie doke. Go, clock's on. Oh, snap. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, guys. I'm just not seeing all of these questions. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Does anyone, now that I see this, does anyone want to see the emotions list again. Whether, yeah. I can see all of these now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. I really like these comments. I wish I saw these the whole time. <laughs> So we have a couple more minutes while you guys finish your paragraph. 
Um, but I'm going to hop back over to the list just so you can see everything, make sure you have all the words you want. Give me one second. Boom. Okay. So for my own mishap, I'm gonna leave that just for a little bit longer so you guys can finish your paragraphs. So when you're making this paragraph, think about how these words kind of fit with what you were feeling physically. Because when you when somebody is reading your writing, they want to they want to understand you. That's why they're reading it. They want to know what you were feeling, and they want to be able to imagine exactly what it was that you were going through, what you were experiencing. So if you can make it something tangible, like maybe a, the prickling on your fingertips or like the feeling of a bunion on your left foot, you know, something like that will be very relatable to somebody and they'll be like, ah, I know the annoyance of a bunion on the left foot. Okay, so kind of be creative with that and find different ways to to explain these emotions. I'm going to come back now because I want to have a chance for people to share. Okay. All right. In the comments, let me know. Does somebody have something? Somebody has to have something. I really want to see what you guys wrote. I wait. I have something. Fine, maybe I can go first. I will, I'll go first. Okay, so here's mine. When I'm in the thick of it, when the anxiety has a hold on my neck and sand sadness has wrapped its cold and murky arms around my body, when the only thoughts that make it through are the ones constantly putting me down, it feels impossible to catch a break. The storm rages in my mind, chucking debris into my eyes, and I am left cowering in the fetal position, blinded by my own self-doubt, self-loathing, and self-pity. That's mine. What do you guys think? Tell me some words. Mm hmm Let's see. I think, so what I used was, I described what it feels like to not be able to breathe, um, to have a hand around your neck when you feel like you can't describe what you're feeling to somebody. Um, or if somebody puts their cold arms, their cold body, I guess, against yours, you know, that feeling of that discomfort, that, that shiver that you get. Um, those were some of the things that I put and my vision of the world, as I described it in this paragraph was a storm raging. That's what the outside world looked to me. Um, 
I said, the storm rages in my mind, chucking debris into my eyes, and I'm left cower cowering in fetal position. So there are some examples of those, uh, those, those little tricks and techniques. Someone, Kavisha said, wow, that was so full of emotion. Described it with analogy. Thank you. Uh, Kim Smart said, familiar words. I can relate to what you have written. Puts me in that place. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Somebody has shared one. So I'm going to read Merrill's. She said, the three broken ribs that are in their fourth week of healing are protesting this morning with the new nerves twitching in rebellion against the injustices I've endured. And then, out of nowhere, the world's injustices, past and present, weigh in on this stage of disquiet. I see the arrows of suffering shooting at me from north, south, east, west. There is no shield. I lay frozen, stark, naked soul, spirit closing in, my eyes fluttering. I need this feeling to end. Oof. Oof. That was good. That was really nice. So let's see break it down how much time do we have we don't have very we have four minutes and i think it will just shut us off so whoever else wants to type something in really fast get it in um so i can read it before we close um let me refresh this to make sure i'm not missing somebody that was, someone said that was elegantly written thank you how much editing did that writing require? I often write, but then I edit it and the emotion goes away. Um, I do edit sometimes. And I think it's important to me, it's important to keep the rawness of the emotion, even if it doesn't necessarily um, seem like grammatically correct. I like to keep it because that's your voice and that's your personality in your writing. And that's important to keep. So Tova wrote, my blood floats like bubbles on the shore of my mind, linking molecules clad in olive tiredness, breathless the hush. I breathe in golden light and feel expanded. That's beautiful. That I, I can really visualize breathing in golden light in your whole body, just widening with all of that. Thank you for sharing. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, I realize you guys, hold on. Let me share some of these so you can read them yourself. There you go. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else want to share? <laughs> Anxiety does sound gloomy. Okay, here we go. I fell in love. I did not expect that. I was surprised but felt optimistic. I could relax better, sleep better, and be present more often. I felt like I was in a different world, one that I one that only I could see. So that was that was really sweet. That was really nice. It was beautiful. Um you slept better and be more present. I'm thinking about how this could add a little bit more tangible feel. Yes, you, you're sleeping better, but how does sleeping better feel? Like you wanna show what you're feeling, don't tell it. Um, what is, like I said, what does sleeping better look like? That's something to consider. Um, do you mention the emotion directly when writing as well? Or do we write about using or do we write about it using the body sensations and show, sorry, or do we write about it using the body sensations and outlook of the world? Referring to showing, not telling here and how to navigate that balance. That's yes, exactly. Um, you can do a little bit of both, like it depends. You want to show as much as you can, but also give enough so that people do know what you're talking about. If you're too ambiguous, then people are just confused. Um, yeah. That's what I have to say on that. Let me know. I hope that helps. Uh, you Okay, so this PDF, um, 
if you you can follow me on Instagram at live happy or follow my medium page under Tori Franklin. Um, and I can if you follow my email subscription, you follow my email list, I can send it out. And as part of uh, a medium piece that I will write later this week about this experience. So if you want that list, I will write about it soon and you will get it in an email once you subscribe to my page. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Who else wrote something? I'm glad that you're feeling better after this exercise. Thank you. Let's see what else we have. If anybody else shared something. Thank you, Meryl. She said, thank you, Tori. You're an inspiring teacher. I'm following you on Medium. Thank you. That's so nice. Thank you. When I, okay, Terry wrote, when I, what I saw was my neck collapsing in on itself like a tower of donuts with no sturdy infrastructure. That was beautiful. Boom. Okay. It was compressing my spinal cord and it was going to require an urgent, complicated surgery leaving my abilities to move and see and balance completely transformed. I breathed in slowly, considering the incessant pounding in my chest, my mind, my heart, as I picked up the familiar ride on a runway tra runaway train, sliding along in an inevitable derailment caused by my one body. Wow. That Familiar ride on a runaway train, sliding along an inevitable, de inevitable derailment. That was a very good metaphor. I like that a lot, Terry. That was beautiful and heartfelt. That makes me approve that so everybody else can see it. When writing fiction, how can you incorporate research while maintaining emotional value? That's a good question. Um, so I guess it depends. It really depends on what you're writing about, of course. But if you, you can definitely keep a balance. I wrote a piece once, um, I was writing about a castle and you can add the research that you find out about this castle, for example, about the history, but also put in trickles, trickles of how either this history or this, castle made you feel and make sure it's like it stays raw and authentic um especially i guess it's it's obviously different for fiction and non it, it's not different for fiction and non-fiction i don't think not in my opinion i think emotions should be raw should be genuine should be authentic and when people try to clean things up too much uh then it doesn't have as much impact so I think, you know, it's finding that balance. And of course it, it varies between every, every piece that you write. And that's something that you're just going to have to feel and trust your intuition on. That's, that's uh, like bring, getting back to that presence. When you're, when you're present, you can feel what feels authentic to you and what feels right for the piece. I hope that helps. Um, wonderful session connecting me back to my writing. Thanks so much. Thank you, Sabrina. Also, I want to say, um, if I pronounce anybody's name wrong, I apologize in advance, even though it is now past. <laughs> okay. Do we have any other questions before we wrap up? If not, I want to say thank you all so much for joining me. This was really fun once I was able to get the questions figured out. <laughs> Otherwise, I was over here alone on the desert. I was like, what am I doing? Where is everybody? I see. Okay, anyways, thank you guys so much. Um, follow me. Follow my Medium page at Tori Franklin. Follow me on Instagram at Live Happy, L-I-V-E-H-A-P-P-I-I -I, to stay connected and to stay up to date. Um, I have a book coming out called You Anthem. Uh, it will be going on pre-sale in one to two weeks. To stay updated on that, you can also follow my Medium, follow my Instagram. 
to know when that when that pre-sale begins. And I really hope you guys um, are able to purchase it and connect with it and all the things. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I had such a great time. Have a good night. Bye now.